Good day once again ladies and gentlemen and uh, once again we are meeting to discuss another another scintillating episode of the you know um, uh, May June paper uh, that was written in uh, yeah this year in 2021 okay so um, we are looking at question 7 that's based on electrostatics so if you haven't subscribed yeah please do the right thing okay be part of the family and uh, for those of you who may need assistance in mathematics or physical science please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and our email address is info at mlungesinkosi.co.za right so let's quickly look at the question so they're giving us uh, and by the way uh, just just to say um, you know this is one of the questions that I've getting I've gotten quite a lot of uh, uh, you know um, uh, inquiries on uh, you know people were asking me to assist you know uh, wanting to know how to answer this question so finally the time has come right so um, they say two charged spheres are in S are both uh, stationary on a smooth insulated surface inclined at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal they say sphere s of mass 0.01 kilograms carrying a charge of minus six okay is connected to a 0 0.03 uh, uh, meters uh, long light in extensible string attached to point p which is at the top of the incline all right so uh, there's point p there on the incline and uh, they're telling us that it's attached to that string uh, s is rather uh, attached to that string there uh, sphere s that is and then they say sphere r carrying a charge of 5 times 10 minus 9 coulombs is held uh, such that the distance between the spheres um, yeah the centers of the spheres are as shown in the diagram so there's that distance between the two spheres there between their centers and in this case we know that they are all held stationary okay that's going to be important probably and they say sphere r exerts an electrostatic force of magnitude 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 3 newtons on sphere s okay right just to mention it of course we know that if uh, sphere r exerts that magnitude of a force on s then uh, similarly sphere s also uh, exerts an equal but opposite uh, uh, force on sphere r right now they say state coulomb's law in words and uh, we know that the electrostatic force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges or to the uh, um, you know to the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart okay uh, in this case we simply know that you can state that it's from their centers uh, but it's not really necessary since we are dealing with point charges anyway right so um, the, the second question says uh, calculate the distance r between the spheres okay so we're given the force between them okay so we're just going to use coulomb's uh, uh coulomb's law okay to answer this one okay so we know in this case we simply have 7.2 um, we know f is equals to k qr qs divided by the distance r squared right so this is 9 times 10 to the power 9 that's coulomb's constant uh, the charge on each sphere that's 5 times 10 to the power minus 9 and uh, multiplied by 6 times 10 to the power minus 9 now uh, uh, notice that i did not substitute the sign uh, of uh, charge r and s i just took the absolute value remember what the sign helps us with is just the uh, just to know uh, the nature of the force okay whether it's a force of attraction or repulsion okay and we can state that later okay so the distance that's r squared and we know that the force we're given as 1.2 times 10 to the power uh, minus 3 okay right so all that we need to do is just uh, do our mathematical gymnastics there so remember this is over 1 okay so uh, if we cross multiply let's see the top part okay 
So when I cross multiply there, I'm going to get 1.2 times 10 minus 3 r squared, which is equal to, when you take the product there, you get 2.7 times 10 minus 7. Okay, of course, we are going to divide both sides by 1 times 10 minus 3. Uh, divide by 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 3. Uh, we're simply going to divide that and get the square root. And our final answer is, okay, um, I get an answer of r is 0 0.015 meters. All right, and that's our final answer uh, for that uh, distance between them. And then secondly, they say draw a labeled free body diagram um, showing, okay, so, uh, uh, sorry, for, for sphere S, that is. Okay, so we want to know what would that free body diagram look like. Okay, so if I look at sphere S, by the way, notice this is for four marks, right? Um, so obviously that should tell us something. So let's see, what are the forces that are acting on sphere S? So first of all, you would agree with me that it's being pulled by that the tension on the string, okay? So it would be the tension on P, okay? So tension P in this case. Um, and then we also have, uh, if you would agree with me, we also have the force of attraction. Now you'd note that uh, sphere S is being attracted by sphere R, um, so the force between them there is a force of attraction. So therefore, I would actually say, well, this is the electrostatic force that's pulling in that direction. So you can say force electrostatic, or you can say force of attraction. Yeah, in fact, let's call it that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I won't finish uh, uh, writing that out. All right, now what are the other forces that are acting there? Um, you can choose to say, well, look, uh, there's also the normal force. I mean, because sphere S is sitting on a surface there, uh, so there would be a normal force that's acting on it, okay? Now, uh, you, it's up to you now on this one, because remember, there's also the force of gravity that's acting on it. now. You can either choose to draw, you know, a vertical force like that going downwards, or you can draw the components of gravity. In fact, let me rather choose to draw those ones, um, you know, the, the, the components of the gravitational force. So in this case, I can say, well, this is going to be the perpendicular component of gravity. So I'm going to call it F gravity perpendicular. But remember that it's also being pulled down uh, by the parallel component of gravity. So, uh, by the way, I don't know which one is bigger than which. Uh, so this would be F gravity uh, parallel. So this is the parallel component of gravity. Of course, uh, with some, uh, uh, it depends on uh, what you, dep you want to call it. Some call it uh, uh, FGX and they call it, they call this one FGY, and that's really up to you, okay? So in this case, we've got parallel component and we've got the perpendicular component. Of course, alternatively, you could have chosen to just draw one force of gravity like that, vertically downwards, okay? And it doesn't form a straight line with those two. Okay, right, now they wanted us to calculate the, uh, the tension. So that's 7.4.1. They want us to calculate the tension on uh, the string, okay? Now, you'd notice in this case that we were given the mass of the, uh, you know, the, the, the mass of the, of, the, of, of the spheres, right? So what I would do uh, for 7.4, in fact, sorry, that was 7.3. So for 7.4.1, okay? Remember that the sum of forces, so the net force acting on the uh, on sphere S is actually zero. Why? Because it's stationary, right? Okay. 
And now, um, what are those forces that are acting on sphere S? So let's take all the forces in the horizontal or whether in the in the parallel dimension, right? So what are the forces? I've got tension, okay? So I'm going to take uh, the direction upwards as positive minus the force of attraction, okay? Or you can say the electrostatic force, sorry, force attraction minus in this case, the force, the parallel component of gravity, Fg parallel, and these are equal to zero. So to get that tension, uh, I'm just going to take these to the other side. Force of attraction, we already had that as 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 3, right? Uh, remember, I change the sign when I take it to the other side. Now, how do we calculate the parallel component of gravity? We simply say, it's going to be mass times gravitational acceleration times the sine of the angle, and we're given our angle there as 25 degrees. So this is going to be 0 0.01 times 9.8, the sine of 25 degrees. Okay, uh, sorry, it's out of our sight there a little bit. Okay, so in this case, that's going to be the sine of 25 degrees. And so, um, what do we get for our final answer? Okay, and I get a final answer of uh, 0 0.04. Okay, I suppose you can say 0 0.043 uh, newtons. Okay, please you can verify that just to check if I'm still on the right track. Okay, and that's our value for tension. Okay. All right, and uh, the final question they say, well, calculate the net electric field at point, uh, point P. Now, remember, when we calculate the, the field, uh, we make an assumption that that's a, a, a positive test charge, right? Uh, and what you need to keep in mind is that, remember, uh, in that case, it would simply mean that we're not calculating a force, but we are calculating a field it means that uh, the region in space where a force can be felt, right? So, um, now let's think about point P uh, just for a second. If we had a positive charge there, what type of a force would it feel due to S? Okay, so I want us to just draw that uh, field, uh, um, then that net field there. So what type of a, a force would it feel due to S? Okay, so if you think about point P as being positive and uh, S obviously is given as negative, so they would actually attract, isn't it? So the point charge at P would be pulled towards S. So let's say that would be the field due to S. I'm going to call it ES, right? So the field due to um, a sphere S okay it would actually be in that direction now if you think about now let's forget about s a bit let's look about at p and r so if p was a positive charge and it experienced a force due to r what type of a force would it be it would be a repulsion force so it means that p would be pushed in that direction because of r so in that case it means that the field uh, would be in that direction there Okay, so um, so the field due to R, okay, would be in that direction. So now, what we're simply going to do, it means if we take the net field, it would be the difference between the two. Why? Obviously, because uh, in this case, they are going in different direction, okay, directions rather. Uh, so let's calculate the fields. Uh, so let's say the field due to S. That's going to be KQ S divided by the distance. Okay, uh, we just need to be a little bit careful here when we're dealing with fields. Um, so that's 9 times 10 to the power 9. Uh, the charge on S is 6 times 10 to the power minus 9. And the distance between P and S 
it's that 0 comma 0 0.03 there 0 0.03 and remember this should be squared okay right uh, you can get the answer to that and then uh, let's say the field due to R let's find that again it's going to be the same thing kqr divided by r squared okay the distance between that so that's 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge at r that's 5 times 10 to the power minus 9 uh, divided by the distance between p and sphere r remember it's going to be 0 0.03 plus that uh, distance that we found there which was 0 0.015 so it means that it's going to be the sum of those at 0 0.045 but remember to square that distance okay uh, i'm a little bit out of space here so i'm just going to try and squeeze everything uh, onto this side okay so let's find the answers to our questions Okay, so in the first one, I get a value of 60,000 newtons per coulomb. Remember, field is not a force. Okay, so it's measured in uh, newtons per coulomb. So that's 60,000 uh, newtons per coulomb. Okay, so n uh, to the power c minus 1. Okay, sorry, uh, as I said, I'm out of space there. Okay, so... Um, in this case, uh, um, in which direction would that be? As we said, it's going uh, down the incline. So if we take that direction as our positive direction, uh, we can say, well, it's positive and it's going down the incline, right? Okay, so let's find the field for the next one. Right, and for the second one, we get an answer of 22,000 okay uh, 222 that's newtons per coulomb okay and remember in this case it was going uh, up the incline so uh, if you don't mind i'm just going to get the final answer over here okay i'm just going to put it there so we're looking for the net field isn't it okay so we're looking for the net field so i'm just going to say look it's going to be the sum of them but remember that we're taking the vector sum so it's going to be uh, es in the positive direction plus negative er because it's going in the opposite direction isn't it okay so you can say this is going to be 60,000 minus that 22,200 da 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 okay and our final answer is simply going to be uh, 37,000 um, so that's my final answer that's 37,777.78 okay and remember this is a newtons per coulomb and by the way uh, because it's in newtons per coulomb in this case we also need to state the direction so it's obviously going to be uh, down the incline okay right so we're not given the points of a compass in this case so we're just going to give that in terms of uh, you know the relative to the incline so i hope that makes sense ladies and gents uh, and i hope it, it was a really really enjoyable question and um, yeah so uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed please please be part of the family we're almost at that 20k mark and uh Hopefully we'll get there during the course of this, you know, week or, you know, in the coming week. And um, yeah, please continue to also recommend our channel to, you know, as many people as possible so that they could also be helped so that you do well in physical science. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.